Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to get unreasonably passionate about pointless statistics. So we're talking about how Tesla's Model S Plaid claims a 0-60 to 60 time of 1.99 seconds, but in reality it more than likely doesn't actually have a 0-60 to 60 time of under 2 seconds, and Tesla's own website suggests this if you do a little digging. Here's the thing, I really, really like cool engineering, and Tesla does a lot of that. I also really, really don't like deceptive marketing, and Tesla, well, I'll let you finish the sentence. So here's the problem. If you go to Tesla's website, you'll see three options for the Model S. The long range, with a claimed 0-60 to 60 of 3.1 seconds, note that there is no asterisk next to this claim. Then the Plaid, with a 0-60 to 60 of 1.99 seconds, again, note that there is no asterisk next to this claim. And finally, Plaid Plus with a 0 to 60 of less than 1.99 seconds, and again, no asterisk next to this claim. But what if you read the fine print? Well, that pulls up a page which provides more details and shows you a side-by-side -side comparison of the different models. Turns out, the 1.99 second claim actually does have an asterisk in the fine print, and that asterisk, which is a difficult word to say frequently, reveals they're subtracting the first foot of rollout. I have three problems with this. First off, most people don't know what rollout is, and that's totally fine. Why should the masses know about some drag racing measurement method used by the National Hot Rod Association or NHRA? The second problem, I think it's quite deceiving how hidden this information is. It should be shown on the main purchase page. And third, I find it a bit odd that they subtract rollout for the more expensive models, but as there's no asterisk next to it, presumably not the base model. That helps differentiate them, making the performance gap appear wider than it really is, since subtracting a foot of rollout would probably put the base model in the twos. All of this is just shady marketing in my opinion. So let's talk about rollout, theoretical 0-60 to 60 times, what Tesla's actual 0-60 to 60 time might be, and what today's fastest 0-60 to 60 could actually be. Alright, so first a quick recap on rollout. So if you head to a drag strip and you've got two cars that are going to race, obviously they need to start at the same line, right? And so what drag strips have are these two light beams going across, and you use those beams to line up the car. So first you'll hit a pre-stage beam that lets you know that you're very close to the line that you're going to start from, and then your tire rolls in front of that stage beam going across, and you know, hey, I'm at the line, I'm ready to launch down this drag strip. Now, when they say go, you have a little bit of time where your tire is moving forward and it hasn't yet broken that stage beam, that beam in the front, because the tire's moving forward. And so it moves forward about a foot before the tire actually leaves that beam. And that's when the zero to 60 clock starts actually ticking. We're not talking about reaction time here, we're talking about the car's actual zero to 60. The timing starts once it breaks that beam, which means you get one foot of free acceleration. Now, the reason Tesla does this is because this is what all the big auto magazines do, and all of them know that this is deceptive. The cool thing about the auto magazines versus Tesla is that they actually openly admit what's going on behind this one foot. So Motor Trend, for example, gives you the data of what happens in that one foot. So what is the impact of that one foot of rollout? And so, for example, with the Tesla Model S, P100D that they tested, it was able to accelerate to 5.9 miles per hour in that first one foot, shaving 0.26 seconds off its 0 to 60 time. Another example, a McLaren P1 was able to accelerate to 5 miles per hour and Aventador something a bit quicker than the Tesla in that one foot, 6.1 miles per hour. And an example like a Toyota Camry, it's able to accelerate to 4.3 miles per hour in that first foot. So this is not a 0 to 60. In the case of the Tesla, it's more like a 6 to 60, which we can all agree 6 to 60 and 0 to 60 are very different measurements, correct? I think another way of phrasing this question, like if you were to look at a car maker and a car maker told you, hey, our car can stop from 60 miles per hour down to zero miles per hour and 109 feet. That's the number that Motor Trend got for the Tesla Model S P100D. Stops from 60 to zero and 109 feet. And then you're like, you know, actually that's from 55 miles per hour, but we just said 60. You wouldn't be like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, it's, they just took off five miles an hour. So this, the same should be true for the reverse, right? Why are we talking about a 5.9 to 60 mile per hour time? Meaningless statistic, we don't need it, throw it out. So 
what is the actual zero to 60? If Tesla's claiming that with their Motor Trend spec, uh, you know, removing that first foot of rollout, they're able to get uh, 1.99 second zero to 60. Well, you know, best case like this Aventador, that shaved off 0.2 seconds from its time. So let's say something like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and suddenly our zero to 60 in reality is more like 2.19 seconds. Now, is it possible for the true zero to 60 to be under two seconds? For example, looking at that Plaid Plus, it says less than 1.99 seconds. So this kind of ambiguous number, we don't know what it really is. Is it possible for that to be under two seconds? Well, what I like to do is look at the braking. So the braking can teach us something. Basically, the thought is, a car cannot accelerate faster than it can brake. Uh, and I made a video about this about five years ago, kind of breaking this down. The simple logic is, if you take a vehicle's braking distance from 60 miles per hour down to zero, you find out what that braking distance is, from that number, you can determine what its deceleration rate is, its average deceleration from 60 to zero. That gives you essentially what your peak grip is. And if you reverse that and then use that to calculate a acceleration using that G-force from zero to 60 miles per hour, that can give you your theoretical limit of what could my zero to 60 be. And the reason being, again, I don't know of any car out there that can accelerate to 60 miles per hour faster than it can decelerate from 60 miles per hour down to zero. It does not happen with road cars. So why should you trust that? Well, drag, first of all, helps reduce a 60 to zero time, which means it would hurt your zero to 60 time because drag is helping to slow that car down. If you let off the gas pedal, you just start slowing down. Aerodynamic drag starts to bring you to a stop. And so that is helping reduce your zero to 60 time. That's an advantage you do not have accelerating. The effect is small, right? 60 miles per hour isn't all that fast and not a lot of time is spent close to those speeds while accelerating. Uh, also, downforce can help your 60 to zero. Now, it could also theoretically help your zero to 60, but because the speeds are so low, it's not gonna be that much downforce. Really, we're just talking about a little bit of added drag, which is going to slow your car down, not help it speed up. On the flip side, there are a couple advantages in accelerating versus braking. Usually cars that are very quick at accelerating have larger rear tires than front tires, meaning the bigger tires have more weight on them while accelerating rather than while they're braking. So that's an advantage to accelerating. Also, I think it could be made, the argument could be made that ABS maybe isn't quite as fast to react as the most sophisticated electronic traction control system using an electric motor. I think that could go either way, but I think in reality, you know, it could be that an electric motor might be a little bit more sensitive and help provide the exact amount of force needed to not break friction and accelerate as fast as possible. And then finally, this logic does not apply to rockets, right? So in the future, if they do end up putting a rocket on the back of a car, well, the traction now is no longer an issue, right? The rocket is what's pushing it forward, not the tires. And so you can have a zero to 60 that is faster than two seconds or whatever the frictional limit of those tires are. All right, so let's look at a quick example using some data from Motor Trend. So they tested a Model S P100D. They got a true zero to 60 of 2.53 seconds and a 60 to zero braking distance of 109 feet. Using this 2.53 seconds, we can do the math, say velocity equals acceleration times time. And we can do the math to find out that that vehicle on average is accelerating at 1.08 Gs. Now, from that braking distance of 60 down to zero of 109 feet, we can do the math and figure out what is the average deceleration there, which is 1.10 oh, Gs. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't out accelerate uh, your braking, right? So the acceleration G-force is just slightly less uh, than the peak braking G-force. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that is going to be reversed. So your theoretical zero to 60 in this case, looking at the braking G-force would be 2.48 seconds and the reality was 2.53 seconds. So fairly close in predicting, you know, what's that 0 60 actually going to be? And also not breaking a rule of, you know, decelerating uh, quicker than you're accelerating. 
Now, it's worth mentioning that this P100D was riding on Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, and there are better tires available today, so that means more traction, which means potentially a faster car. So I did this little exercise back in 2016, and I said that based on the best stopping distance we saw of any production car, which was 90 feet, which means a deceleration of 1.34 Gs, the best zero to 60 possible in a production car in the year 2016 would be 2.05. Five seconds. Now, that was 2016. Tires have gotten better since then. Great. So actually, if I were to predict today, what is the best possible zero to 60? Well, a 2018 Porsche 911 GT2 RS was able to stop from 60 to zero in just 87 feet. You can do the math on that. That gives you an average acceleration of 1.2. 38 G's or 44.5 feet per second squared, which gives you a theoretical zero to 60 speed of or time of 1.98 seconds, which is very cool because that's under two seconds. So theoretically, it is possible that today, I believe a car could possibly hit, production car could hit 60 miles per hour in under two seconds, which is very cool. So no production car has done it, right? No production car has gotten a zero to 60 in under two seconds. So that's why it's this really cool thing, right? And now here's Tesla claiming they can do it, except there's an asterisk next to it. And there shouldn't be an asterisk next to something this cool. It should be genuinely done. Uh, so to Tesla, I would say at least, you know, at the very least, put a little asterisk on the main page that says 1.99, uh, like you do on the, you know, behind the scenes look of what the actual speed is or better yet put the actual 0 to 60 speed on it like you do for the base model or better yet actually get a 0 to 60 under two seconds and then we can all celebrate it can be legitimate from 0 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour how cool would that be thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below